Um, so I figured today the best way to do this is to sort of walk you guys through a series of events or like storytelling to figure out or how I figured out who I am as an artist or as a person or sort of like how I got here. And the first part of this story is almost like a lesson of failure. And I think like with any great dream or like journey or whatever idea you have of like happiness, it's always burdened by like the fear of failing. And for me, this moment came really early on in my life. I think I was about six years old, maybe like two years before my parents were divorced. And like with any like traumatic experience, I really like remember a lot of those details. Um, on that day, I remember walking with my mom in Central Park and I was eating like a, a lemon shark popsicle. I remember the guy playing saxophone underneath the bridge in the park. And uh, we were walking home and uh, we lived on a little like apartment building that I used to call the pink house, which was this little pink apartment building on like 89th and Lexington. And uh, I lived there with my mom and my dad. It was a small one bedroom apartment on the first floor. And uh, we had arrived there and we entered the way you normally come home. And I remember walking in and seeing my dad with another woman um, who now in hindsight I know or put together who most likely was a prostitute, you know, garter belts, the whole thing. She was Asian like my mom. But I, I remember my dad's face, you know, and I remember this look that I like never seen before. And like I was too young to understand the situation or like what was going on, but it was very clear to me that like something bad was happening. And I remember him running to the door and slamming the door on my foot. And me and my mom kind of waited outside the apartment building. I remember she was crying and my foot hurt so much, but like I couldn't cry because like she was so sad that like I was just trying to like be there in a way for her. And you know, eventually this woman came out and she was clothed and I remember them like yelling at each other and fighting and then I understood. Like you didn't have to tell me, like I got what it was that was happening. And I understood that like I guess my dad had reached a point now where like it was like there was no return, you know, he was caught with his pants down. And I like never forget that look that he gave me. And um so now I'll go in to explain like the second part of this story, which is like a you know, the last four years of my life have been really crazy. I'm 24 and, you know, a lot of responsibility was dumped on me as being like an artist. You know, ideas of success, um, things that I thought I wanted, dreams, money, uh, you know, recognition, things that I don't necessarily know were ideas or were things that I wanted to subscribe to, you know, and so I had to go along carrying this weight, this responsibility, because I felt maybe like, who was I to throw away all of this, you know, that it was given to me and so many people strive for that, that like I could not like, you know, I had to somehow figure out a way to make it work. During this time, you know, I was in a really serious relationship as well for the past four years and, and it became very hard for me to figure out how to be both of those things and I think it all started at a point where I was also just figuring out, you know, who I was or, or what it is that I wanted. And I don't think I had much time to do that. I sort of just had to assume a position. Someone said to me, you know, somewhere along that time, it takes a really strange person to want to be an artist. And, you know, that really shocked me because it, it's really true. It's a, it's a strange thing to want to do. It's a, like a me, 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 me thing. And it's like you put this thing up on the wall and you want everyone to appreciate it and to recognize you and to judge you and, and it's, it's almost embarrassing and when I heard that it like really it, it twisted my idea around of what I thought I was and, and, and what I was doing with myself and I mean you've seen it before like in movies and and renditions of like the art world, you know, fancy people in a gallery drinking champagne, not paying attention to the art. Like these were the things that like I was giving up everything that I, that I wanted to do and, and, and I was in a position where like I still couldn't like I couldn't battle that I couldn't I couldn't be honest with myself and say like look like this isn't what it means like this isn't what I sought out to do and um, you know that became hard for me when you're when when you start devoting so much time to an idea that's so flawed and 
you know, obviously I, I tried to problem solve. I tried to figure out a way to do both and, and to figure out a way to like be one person that I knew I wasn't and, and still like be true to some other idea. And it also reflected in the kind of artwork that I was making. You know, I was trying to like piece together this sort of Frankenstein of a career, taking all the great things I loved about art and, and pushing them into one. But, you know, that wasn't necessarily me. It was just what I knew I needed to do or tools that I needed to attract attention or gain success. And so again, still motivated by this idea of like acquiring some sort of attention, some sort of recognition. But it was so false in a way. And slowly became more and more confused about what it is that I was doing and became like this person of so egotistical and competitive and concerned with all the things that like I really knew that like weren't true to anything. And you know, during that point I kind of became a really nasty person and you could see why someone, you know, would eventually get fed up of that situation and uh, eventually my relationship ended because you know it was just like who wants to be around someone who's so like me, 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 and like so angry and upset at themselves at the same time. Uh, and that became a tricky situation for me because, you know, I became so codependent, you know, in a way my relationship was like the one pure thing that I knew was going to be there for me, whether or not I figured out what it was that I was doing. And that's not a very responsible or, or careful thing to do to someone, especially like, like put them in your pocket and just pray that, you know, they'll be there for you throughout this mess. And, um, you know, while I was alone, I started to, to dive into the, the, the pretty dark zone. Uh, you know, I had to fill up that position of being codependent. I, I needed some, something to rely on, some sort of security. You know, it was really hard for me to go to sleep. I, I mean, I'm sure you guys have been through bad breakups too. You know, I can't eat and can't sleep. And so I spent most of my time doing drugs and staying out late. and. You know, trying to fulfill whatever it was or try to like distract myself from what it was that I was feeling and art and everything else just became like so oblivious I did not care at all because it was a dream or something that like I didn't care about to begin with so now it's like why would I devote any energy to this and um, you know around this time a buddy of mine who's staying with me now uh, we'll call this chapter finger money he, uh, he was in a hotel in Miami and he was sticking his head out the window, and, and as he was coming back into the room, the, hotel, uh, the window slammed on his finger, chopping off like just the tip. And he, uh, he sued the hotel. He made a grip of money, and you know, he didn't have an apartment, and he was like one of my best friends, and, and during the time I like, really needed someone to, like, to be there with, or to, to go through this with, and I, I knew that he would almost be the perfect person, you know, to want to stay out late and do whatever it was that we were doing. So, he came and stayed with me for a little bit, and I think I needed that. I needed to like exhaust whatever it was that I was feeling. And uh, one of those nights, and I, I don't want to really mention this, but it's really important to the story. Um, we smoked angel dust. And I don't know if any of you have smoked angel dust before, but it is hell on earth. It is not a fun thing at all. I think it took me like an hour to walk from one corner to the other corner, just because I was like so slow and like all I wanted to do was like get out of this position, like everything was red and eventually I had lost the people I was with and I found myself locked in a public restroom and I locked myself there because I was so scared that like you get really violent and I thought I was going to like strangle someone and like the last thing and I wanted to do was not only deal with all this stuff but like be in jail on drugs. So I was like no way, like I'm just going to lock myself in this bathroom. Uh, and I ended up calling a friend of mine who's been sober for a long time and talking to him and I couldn't believe like the things that were coming out of my mouth like it was like all the worst things about myself that I hate I was saying like becoming like so arrogant and egotistical and, and this hubris of just like all this bullshit kind of and he hung up the phone and I'm sure you know he gets it he's like this idiot you know like he's like I needed someone to talk to and here I was, like this tragic artist, you know, this cliche. It was like, again, becoming the one thing like I don't want to be. And yet it's like so easy to be that because I was weak. But an interesting thing happened there, and it was as I started to sober up, it's almost like weight training. The things that I wanted started to look easier and easier to achieve. And so I just kept telling myself, you know, like, once I get out of this bathroom, 
I'm going to do this, and, and I'm going to do this right, and, and, and I'm going to figure out what it is that I want. And you know, eventually I was sober, and eventually I walked out, and then the guys in the pizzeria were looking at me like, what the hell is this guy doing? And I walked home, and it was one of those nights, you know, it was snowing a lot this summer. I remember just walking home and feeling the cold air and letting it like, you know, sort of like cleanse me in a way. And so I went to sleep that night, which was cool because, you know, sleep was really hard for me at that time. Uh, and I woke up, and when I woke up, I did something that may sound strange to you as an artist. You think you're always painting and doing this stuff, but I, you know, I got in this position where I was like a factory. Like I thought I just needed assistance, and I was just like pumping out ideas. Like it didn't matter if I was painting or not. And I painted something alone. I think it was a Saturday. And it was brief. It was only 15 minutes, but I realized then that like when I was painting, all the pain and like all the things just like vanished, you know. And it's this idea that like. Sorry. Uh, when I was a kid, you know, I'd do pottery and, and crafts, and, and I would paint, and you know, I'd do them when I was alone or I was sad or I was having problems with my mom. And I realized then that like this is what I, this is why I do that. You know, it's it's for this feeling. This is my therapy. This is my drug. It's like all that other stuff, all those other dreams, materials. It's just like baggage that other people like attached to my dream, but because it was so vague, it was so easy to like take on those things and, and to think that like that it is that's what I wanted. But in this moment I realized that like it wasn't about showing stuff on walls. It wasn't about selling things. It wasn't about magazine articles or being like written up in the New York Times. It was just about like, making things. Making things with my hands. And like that's the idea. That's my dream. Like, that's the thing I committed to. And so I guess you can put all this together. But the one thing I'm trying to say is that but then you have a destination, a journey, a dream that you have after you look at it in its purest form and not to like make things so really complicated because it just makes things harder on yourself. So find what it is that you want to do and deconstruct that. So it's so simple that like it's so easy. You know, it's so easy for me to pick a brush and paint and all, all that stuff is just like baggage. <laughs>